Poverty in schools is not a new phenomenon. Poverty in schools has been around for many years, but the impact of poverty is what we're gonna to discuss today in the next five minutes. We know right now in Plain Local, our children who walk in and out of our schools, who sit in your classrooms, who ride our school buses, that we send home backpacks. 43% of all the children who reside in Plain live in poor economic conditions. What that means for us is higher numbers of free and reduced lunch, higher families in need of services. This impact of low economic status across our school district is also impacting the brains of our youth. Kids are coming to your classrooms with deficits based on their socioeconomic deficit in cognitive skills and memory and in function. It's not that they can't, it's they've yet to be exposed to experiences, quality education and consistency that's gonna allow them to grow and flourish as all kids. The youth response to coming from poverty and coming from traumatic areas includes such things as being exposed to violence or violence themselves, the creation of excess noise, the chaos factor, making impulsive decisions, and fight or flight. If instant gratification is not met, instant gratification is sought by children because that is the culture and climate that they're coming to you from. We're going to talk in this quick PD session again about three specific things that impact students coming to your classrooms. We're going to talk about expectations, about environment, and about prior experiences. Expectations in the world that children are growing up today come from instant gratification. And I know you see this in your classrooms. I know you see this in the response to the children. Children are growing up in an age today that is more powerful than at any other time in civilization. Instant gratification comes in the form of the internet, iPhones, Google phones, Siri, access to answers to questions that are instant in nature. That expectation also comes back to you as a classroom teacher or whatever your role is in the child's life. If there is a question that occurs, they want to know exactly what the answer is now, and their need for instant gratification goes across the curriculum. When you think about environment that our kids are coming to us every day from, if you take a moment with your PLC team and think about the environment of Plain Local, the environment of Canton, Ohio, think about a low socioeconomic area that exists right here in our community. Can you think of a bank? How about a grocery store, a fine dining establishment? You probably can't because many don't exist in those areas. Typically what you'll find are, again, instant gratification, 777 boom, chain restaurants, fast food, quick, quick, quick. Again, this is the environment and expectation that kids are coming to you with today. Prior experiences make up all of our past knowledge and help kids create file folders in their brains as to what has happened in the past to the cognitive learning that you're trying to share with them through a lesson. If those cognitive experiences don't exist for a child because they've never been out of a certain area of Canton or never got to experience what it is that you're sharing through geography, through science, through history, then they're not able to file that away and make a connection to the current learning from something that already exists. When we think about experiences with kids and our current content, it's so important for us to make real life connections with the kids so that the learning becomes connected and it becomes memorable by bringing in something from somewhere else to help them see, touch, feel the experience that you're trying to create for them. We also look at what's called ACEs and we've done this in the Plain Local Schools through our PLCs and EQ for a couple years now. But ACEs aren't going away. In fact, ACEs are becoming more prevalent. The knowledge of the adverse childhood effects that kids come to our classrooms with, as you can see from the list, continue to grow. There is no answer for children who have been impacted by ACEs, but we do know that the number of ACEs a child has been exposed to does impact their ability to maintain in school, to maintain to a lesson, and impact their ability to stay with you in terms of lesson cognition and lesson output. The only way to overcome an ACE, an adverse childhood effect, is by that relationship that you have with the child. Knowing them as a person, knowing their skill sets, knowing their strengths, knowing their needs, 
so that you can make, again, a rapport connection with them so that they feel wanted, welcome, and loved when they're in your classroom environment. ESSA and the homeless law has also impacted where we are today in terms of serving children in poverty and serving children who are with us by virtue of not permitted to be in their home. It's a very sad state of affairs when kids are not welcome in their own home or they've been physically removed from their home to live with someone else. Students in the foster care system do have a right to maintain their current educational environment even after being moved because stability is what we know to be true in the development of relationships. Dear teacher, thank you for listening to this presentation. My name is Mark Parent. I'm the Pupil Services Director for the Plain Local School. Thank you for what you do for our kids.